Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Be Unstoppable Summit brought to you by Freshworks. Trusted by over 50,000 customers around the world, Freshworks makes it fast and easy for businesses to delight customers and employees. As technology increasingly becomes a differentiator for organizations, the need for the uninterrupted IT becomes really essential. But along with it, with the great resignation that we see in the marketplace, we see an increasingly greater shift towards employee engagement and employee experience. The need to extend service management beyond the traditional IT organization is probably the right step for organizations to deliver a collaborative, unified, and delightful employee experience. I am Nirmal Krishnamurthy, product marketer for Fresh Service, the right size service management solution from Freshworks. In this session, we have William McKeon White from Forrester to provide the outlook of ESM, evolving trends, and ESM's role in delivering the employee engagement and experience. Please join me in welcoming William McKeon White from Forrester. Over to you, Will. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nirmal. And uh, very nice to meet you all. My name is, again, Will McKeon White. I'm an analyst at Forrester Research. And um, as I'm bringing up my slides here, uh, one of the things that I cover as part of my remit as an analyst is enterprise service management. And one of the things that we want to share with you today is really what is ESM, what are organizations doing with it, why enterprise service management, and how it's helping solve for some of this employee experience gap, and how it's really helping organizations reduce down the um, uh, reduce down the disruption and increase the unstoppability of their operations today. But so I'll start off with talking quickly about the state of service management, ESM, and really what it is. And suffice to say, from this data that we recently got back, uh, everybody really is doing or is actively interested in enterprise service management or having a shared service catalog or an enterprise service portal of some form. But what does ESM mean to a given organization is a little bit uh, not yet agreed upon, we'll say. Um, so for the scope of service portals, there's a wide degree of variation here with a large variety of um, different services, from IT as well as from other enterprise or enterprise departments being included under this service portal today. But with all of this data, what that tells us is that people recognize that there's a need to change the way that work is done today because um, some things have changed and are going to continue to be changing today. Uh, we are anticipating at Forrester Research a 300% increase in the total full-time remote work population, even following um, hopefully uh, whatever is whatever we can call the uh, defeat of the pandemic. Um, we are going to be anticipating that this population remains significantly higher than it was before, and even for employees who aren't necessarily fully remote, there's still going to be a significant increase in the number of employees working from home at some point or another. So an office and anywhere work hybrid is going to be plus anywhere work is going to be a total of about 70% of the of the working population. There's a few key takeaways from this data and from really the state of the market today. The first being that work isn't going to be going back to the way it once was. IT, as a direct result of that, is more important than ever. And enterprise service management is not only actively being used, but is going to increasingly be critical to actually enable this new way of working into the future. And so why enterprise service management and really how is it helping organizations solve for some of their organizational problems, if you will. Uh, so these changes to the workplace have left a somewhat glaring gap because technology is the intermediary now today of even the most basic level of 
productivity. This isn't something that's necessarily new, but it's been somewhat more acutely realized as a direct result of the pandemic. Because technology really underpins all forms of work today. Every action an employee can take at work is now intermediated by technology, even if it's just going over and talking to a coworker, gathering information on a prospect, filling out a time off request. The days of when organizations were able to sort of uh, fudge processes together through manual processes are unfortunately coming to a close because even the most basic levels of getting a desk to actually be at in your office is now again intermediated by another piece of technology. And traditionally, most employee services have been a combination of formal and informal work that becomes significantly harder to maintain, or I should say the informal work becomes significantly harder to maintain when you have so many different processes now that require a technology intermediary or require additional technology system in order for you to interact with. Um, this quote came from a security, the, or a member of the security team in a shared services at a, a, a or a security shared services team at a Fortune 500. Um, they brought up that every day most of the work that they do wasn't necessarily inventoriable or was difficult to track because it was just a whole bunch of quick tasks that would take them about five minutes in order to email somebody back. Today, that directly leads to unpredictability and interrupting or preventing, I should say, employees from getting the support they need because so many of these processes that we have internally for whatever it is, whether it's getting a security assessment of an application, whether it's getting approval for the purchasing of another, whether it's talking to a coworker, getting information from a coworker or talking to a coworker, whether that's getting time off, all of these are now processes that have to be formalized and uh, intermediated by technology. Informal processes creates an unpredictability because of there is so much of this variable work and because you have so many things that you're doing just as a course and not necessarily tracking as a formal service, this is creating interruption for employees. And so to directly counter that, this is where enterprise service management comes in. Organizations are overcoming this gap with ESM. And this is leading to a sort of twofold capability of uninterruption, if you will. ESM is helping enable the underlying function of a specific task, as well as enabling the functional flexibility in order or that's needed to accommodate for emergent needs. And there's really, two, there's a sort of six um, main reasons why we see ESM being used for this purpose today. First of them being workflow, being able to properly actually articulate how things should go when a process is being executed. A lot of organizations don't necessarily have this today and are missing a tool in order to help them uh, in order to help them actually formalize some of this work that is happening internally. Then there's also with the integrations that is a direct, um, uh, direct companion of that. If your system can't interact with the critical systems of record or other systems of work, then you're once again back to those manual intermediate intermediated steps when reducing down the amount of manual steps that have to be done and that are reliant on the variable work is a way to ensure that you, your employees don't face the same degree of interruption that they otherwise would. And then there's finally, of course, automation. And this is usually what we see as being one of the really key selling points for a lot of organizations bringing in new tools. Um, but in this, it's very much a complementary effort because what we think of as automation is very often handled by workflow integrations. But as a direct result of formalizing work and making it more repeatable, you do introduce options in order to automate some of this fulfillment to create things like thresholds, to create um, more standard steps in order to reduce down the amount of manual work that's needed. Because for the most basic things, if you're doing something like um, implementing hoteling, for example, in your organization where you have to actually go and rent out a desk effectively for the day, 
if that is a manual process, uh, you're going to have a continuously overwhelmed team. If you have an automated solution, then you can actually implement that effectively at your organization. And additional components that sort of lead to why ESM is being chosen for this, it creates a predictable fulfillment. Um, it actually allows you to create estimates for when something will be done. Uh, that's usually needed for employees to actually remain productive, especially in this remote work environment where um, there is no such thing as tacit communication. The more formalized and more explicit you are with each and every interaction, the more predictable work becomes and the more uh, the increased amount of continuity you have, regardless of the additional points of disruption here. You have flexible asset tracking as well that allows you to actually create the concept of an item and track where that item is in a workflow um, to assist with some automation efforts as well. And finally, accessible low and no code. Um, the more power that your citizen developers have in order to actually create these capabilities internally, the more effective your organization will be in actually implementing them. Because if it's on one or two overworked developers, chances are they already have a pretty severe backlog. And the more uh, power that can be given to the actual lines of business who need this assistance, who need the ability to go and create these new, um, these new solutions, these new automation platforms, or I should say automation uh, interfaces for the actual execution of work, the more effective that your organization will be. And we have seen organizations actively using this in order to help allevi alleviate some of their internal operations problems. Um, one example that we came across and one organization that we talked to was a uh, South African University. And they mentioned after COVID hit, they had to change as much of their in-person processes to be as automated as possible. And within the first few months of the pandemic, they were able to drive suddenly 45% of all enrollments in a fully automated fashion through that ESM portal. Now, that isn't necessarily 100%, but that is a significant reduction in the amount of in-person work that had to be done. And the way we tend to see this is that with each subsequent year of tools being used, the percentage of work automated grows ever higher. And we've also, I should also say though, this isn't just a result of the pandemic. This has been something that is ESM as a whole, as a trend has been going on for a significant amount of time now. Um, and, and when we were talking to a European industrial systems organization, they mentioned that their ESM tool was the only application that everyone in every division was actually allowed to use and that it allowed them to actually start changing their line of business processes um, into a tool to actually automate out bookings and rentals. So they're able to fundamentally transform the internal processes of their business into something that was more accessible, more predictable, and more automated as well. It's just so that the pandemic has really made this explicitly um, acute or made this need explicitly acute for a lot of organizations to realize, oh, we need to transform how this work is done. And today we see enterprise service management as a direct result of this, finding its way into the line of business work to manage tasks and assets of all different sorts. We see it being used for order fulfillment or um, order fulfillment and work tracking in a retail organization. We've seen it being used for medical equipment maintenance tracking, as well as asset things like available hospital beds um, in the healthcare industry. We've seen it being used for things like gas station tank safety and maintenance, actually, to ensure that the gas tank at tanks at retail um, and retail shops are actually well maintained and up to code. And even increasingly seeing it for things like fleet management, where um, a department like security, for example, will need to be able to track things like cars belonging to the actual organization. So won't necessarily fall into the same category as a uh, more robust fleet tracking solution, but still provide you with you and the organization, the tools you need in order to track where things you own are in the system. And ESM or enterprise service management extends the service management to really meet the employee's needs wherever it is. 
And so we see it combining both interrupted, uninterrupted IT service, as well as this extended service management in order to create a more comprehensive employee enablement capability as a direct result of this. And it's worth noting that BSM is also not just the line of business work, but really any sort of enhancements that can be made to core IT processes as well um, to automate those, to make those more robust and to make those more self-service wherever possible. And so going back to some of that data I showed in the beginning, ESM is really extending to all of these different employees services all at once. That's some of the reason for this uh, divisioning in the data is that organizations are very rapidly expanding the scopes of their service portals to be things like HR, to be third party services provided directly through them, to be um, supply chain services, to be logistics, to be legal, uh, to be facilities. That's a very common one as well. And as a direct result of that, it's really and changing how organizations are actually able to do work internally from IT into those lines of business as well. And when I say it's also transforming how IT can perform, it's doing things like accelerating incident management, it's reducing change risk through automated risk, um, risk assessments, um, it's asset tracking and automation to allow you to actually know what it is you own and where it is. Um, that's been something a lot of organizations have been expressing a lot of trouble with because they're used to managing everything in a specific physical location when everything is out at the edge. It's a little bit more difficult to say the least. Um, it allows you to do things like common request automation. So instead of having to fill out hundreds of hundreds of thousands of password resets in a day, in a given week or month, you can instead tell the uh, solution to do that in an automated fashion as well. And improved knowledge management, which isn't necessarily something I've spent uh, I've really talked about yet, but it is increasingly critical for. Um, as Normal said, during the things like great resignation, as there's increased turnover at organizations, preserving a capability internally to actually, or I should say, having a capability internally to preserve knowledge and to preserve what is known is a way to ensure that business isn't continuously disrupted as key individuals leave or switch positions. Because one of the key areas that is really under, just overtly underserved in a lot of organizations today is employee experience. And when we are talking about what drives employee experience, we'll be getting into some specific drivers, but overall, the key determiner of a successful employee experience strategy at your organization is ensuring that your employees are able to make progress in their daily journeys. And overall, organizations really haven't done a very good job of that. And as technology now underpins all elements of the employee experience and of the employee's journeys on a daily basis, um, having a C in technology satisfaction is not necessarily the most encouraging uh, assessment to say the least, because this means that on average, well, technically a passing grade, a lot of individuals are being actively prevented from being productive and are actively being disengaged as a result of this. And it's really important to note that there's not only is employee experience important for ensuring that key talent stays in your organization, but it's also just good business on the whole. Um, we see that 81% of the, or in organizations that have a higher employee engagement, there's 81% lower absenteeism, 10% higher customer satisfaction, and 23% more effective utilization of resources because higher profitability doesn't necessarily apply to things like government agencies. But we see overall that having a high employee engagement rate directly correlates to positive business outcomes. And again, technology is the gatekeeper to productivity here. Poor experience with technology or being unable to actually get help with a technology problem impedes daily progress and any IT organization today should have the explicit mission of removing any sort of employee experience barriers that they're noticing in place. And it's worth noting that when we say that there is an overall poor technology experience, this isn't necessarily something that is an IT only problem. Overall, IT actually does very well 
when it comes to serving the customers. We see very high satisfaction rates here whenever folks actually interact with the service desk. So overall, the people in IT are doing a good job, but that isn't the whole story, unfortunately. Um, we see close to 60% of um, employees say to some extent they actively avoid the service desk and 60, about 60% say they're living with issues the service desk can't fix. Uh, suffice to say, that's a recipe for poor employee engagement. And it must be known that technology experience is a shared responsibility. It's not just IT, but it's anybody who has a technology solution that links back into the employee experience or provides out a service. And so you can probably see where I'm getting back around to in a moment here. But today with any sort of problem, the employee support journey tends to go something like this. And this is intentionally generic because this isn't just an IT problem. This could be an HR problem, it could be a facilities problem, it could be a legal problem so on and so forth. Overall, support journeys tend to look like this, but this doesn't necessarily take into account the employee impact of each of these journeys, where each time a problem reoccurs or reemerges, it causes continuously negative engagement on the part of the employee. So organizations, need tools to help them break through these existing problems to improve the overall quality support that they can provide and to reduce down the amount of time that employees just spend waiting for assistance. Because it's this uninterrupted IT service to make sure that they actually be base level productive as well as increasing amount the or increasing the amount of formality that enterprise service management provides and creates predictability to ensure that at the end of the day they can do what they were hired to do. And it's really important to note as well that there should be an element here of just not only increasing the support experience as well as avoiding the need for support because ultimately employees want to be able to do their job as I just said it's not necessarily a we need to encourage employees in order to do it. it is that they need this in order to be a base level of productive and really Enterprise service management is the key underpinning of that because it does allow for increased automation and increased workflow and reducing down the amount of time that people need to spend on manual tasks. And it's actually starting to lead to some transformation as to how we see even things like level one support being done. Uh, so instead of the days gone by of walking on down to the IT shop and saying, I'm having trouble with a laptop, unfortunately, you can't do that anymore. Uh, submitting a ticket won't necessarily ensure that you have adequate response within the time that you want it to be. Um, we tend to see uh, it's something like 40% uh, uh, or actually, no, sorry, I think it's close to 60% of service, most service requests are done within an hour. But if you have a meeting in the next five minutes and you're having a laptop problem, isn't necessarily the most uh, um, acceptable time frame. But what we're seeing increasingly is level one support, you can actually start to automate the total troubleshooting here through using both enterprise service management, excuse me, an endpoint manager, as well as an end user experience management module to just gather information in a more automated fashion to provide the user with either more information that they need in order to make a more accurate request or to provide for the agent in order to reduce down the amount of time that somebody has to spend helping them understand the problem. Because at the end of the day, you don't necessarily want synchronous communication, if you will, for these type of issues. You want people in order to be able, you don't want people, uh, going back a few slides, you don't want people waiting in this queue in order to uh, in order to actually talk with a support agent. You want people able to move on with their day and don't necessarily have to wait for each of these uh, each of these problem points to be resolved. You want everybody being able to feel that they can be productive in their flow and to ensure that they, and to empower them, I should say, with the steps they need in order to continue being productive in their role. And so to cap off, uh, cap off this conversation, why enterprise service management for employee experience? So some of the things we've talked about before, but just wanna uh, provide a quick summary for everyone. Um, really ensuring that you have a single source, uh, single service and knowledge 
source or centralized portal provides people with the ability to say, I need support and I know where to go. A lot of a lot of times support organizations are distributed to this to the four winds. And you don't necessarily know who you can actually contact in order to get assistance or to get um, uh, to get resolution to a problem. Having a single source for that pain point is a way to ensure that your employees don't spend time hunting down the information they need. That also provides you with unified demand management and demand insights, which otherwise you might be lacking, um, as a lot of a lot of times organizations don't know what they're doing because they're so much of their time is spent wrapped up in these five minute tasks that are done by email. Being actually able to track what your organization does tends to lead to more accurate inventorying of time and assets. And this, of course, increases support transparency and actually allows people to have a clear communication as to where things are without putting more effort on the part of the agent in order to update folks on the status of their ticket. It reduces the support seeking time because you have that single source of um, single source single source of service, and it increases the support reliability because again you have actually an understanding of how things will happen in the next in the next few minutes or days instead of sending something into a queue and waiting for it to magically reappear sometime or it just kind of disappearing into the ether. Finally, have increased flexibility for subject matter experts in order to provide their function and to actually adjust how workflows need to be done on the fly, which is, as we've seen in an emergent environment, um, extraordinarily critical. You cannot have inflexible processes. This in this day and age, you need to be able to adapt to whatever situation the world throws at you. And finally, you need a degree of automation facilitation. And at the end of the day, enterprise service management provides all of this, allowing your organization to work uninterrupted regardless of the um, regardless of the fortunate geopolitical situation or whatever um, new and exciting business adventure the world can throw at you. So my name is Ben, Will McCann-Wait, and um, back over to you, Nirm. Well, thank you, Will. I think you summarized it well. Uh, one of my key take key takeaways is how everything at work is intermediated by technology to use your use your words exactly and how ESM is really a key for collaboration employee engagement and employee experience and finally uninterruption I wish we had more time for discussion work but unfortunately that's all the time we have uh, that's it I encourage the viewers to check out other equally interesting and insightful sessions we have as part of our be unstoppable summit thank you again Will, and thanks everyone